Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Civitas webinar called City for Everyone. My name is Vilja Anttila, and I will be your facilitator for this webinar. I hope you're everyone able to see my screen now and now my video camera as well. I will begin this webinar by briefly going through the topic that we will be discussing today. And after that, I will introduce our three panelists, uh, after which we will start with the first panelist and move on to the very interesting topics that we will be discussing today. To begin off with, we will be talking about uh, accessibility today, especially with regards to senior citizens and people with disabilities. So technically people who have limited mobility for some reason and should be taken into consideration with regards to urban mobility and sustainable mobility. Uh, together, these two groups, senior citizens and people with disabilities, count as 25 to 30 percent of world population. And considering that most people are moving to cities to urban areas and continuously that is happening more both in developing and developed countries. Uh, this is a very important topic and today we have three panelists who each of which have a very interesting perspective for the matter and we have an opportunity to hear their experiences and also ask questions. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is nice uh, for me to be able to speak to you about our city, uh, the city of Gdynia, on increasing accessibility for people uh, with disabilities, as we have a lot of experience in the field. Uh, first of all, there is a policy and services already uh, in place, and since uh, 1999, we have the penitentiary of the mayor for persons with disabilities. Uh, she coordinates all the activities related to the participation of people with disabilities in social life and cooperates with uh, the unit of people with disabilities in the city hall. This unit is, uh, uh, is uh, the, the purpose of this unit is to inform uh, per persons with disabilities about their rights and privileges uh, and give information and assist with different formalities that have to be done uh, in the city. Uh, also, to support uh, these persons, there is a new officer for accessibility uh, employed in the road and green areas management, and this is uh, especially for infrastructure uh, design approval. The new best to be a person. The city in Poland who uh, adopted the Barcelona Declaration in 2010 uh, and also elaborated the accessibility standards which were adopted in 2013. It was a very, a very good experience for uh, us to be able to elaborate this uh, document uh, because uh, it had a lot of uh, stakeholder participation. This was done with persons with, persons with different disabilities, with persons uh, from the academia, uh, and also uh, city, uh, city, um, uh, city employees who deal uh, with the barriers and with the different aspects of uh, persons with disabilities. Public spaces in Gdynia are um, the new investments are all adapted for persons uh, who have reduced mobility uh, and the older buildings or public spaces are modernized uh, also including the accessibility standards uh, which I talked uh, uh, a second about. Uh, the sports hall, for example, which you see uh, on the picture, is a special, has a special audience for people with disabilities uh, and uh, also an audio description for uh, persons uh, who uh, do not see uh, to, to be able to hear what is happening during a sports uh, event. Uh, the Gdynia railway uh, station has full accessibility for people uh, who reduce mobility. Uh, it has six elevators uh, to the platforms also. The ticket desk uh, is uh, of lower height uh, and there is a ramp for wheelchairs at the main entrance and special paths on the floors uh, like tactile paving to help blind persons follow the way. Uh, this is, of course, just one example of, of a building in Gdynia which, uh, after modernization, is adapted uh, for persons with disabilities. Another example is the Gdynia Marina and uh, City Beach. 
uh, it has a special wooden ramp for wheelchairs uh, and a large uh, playground uh, available for children with disabilities. This is also a, a special focus uh, in Gdynia now to make the playgrounds for children accessible uh, for either children with disabilities or uh, children who have parents with disabilities. Uh, the transport, public transport, especially in, uh, in Gdynia, uh, is also uh, adapted. The buses and trolley buses are all low floor with special ramps for wheelchairs. Uh, the bus stops uh, were modernized to be more friendly uh, for, uh, for elderly people and uh, people with disabilities. Uh, the, uh, the ramps no, the, sorry, the curbs were especially uh, changed uh, so the buses can uh, come up closer when they come to the bus stops uh, and uh, the ramps can be uh, easily opened. Uh, special transportation uh, system is also uh, available, uh, on-demand services uh, for people who cannot uh, use the public transport and this is uh, operating since uh, 1994. Uh, there are a lot of awareness raising campaigns and workshops uh, uh, organized by the, uh, by the city hall department, uh, which I also mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, so the, uh, the city of Vinya is active in awareness raising campaigns for the general public. Uh, they organize workshops uh, for persons with disabilities, for example, the guide dogs, as you can see in the picture. Uh, and there are also, uh, for example, educational classes uh, for school children organized to increase awareness and acceptance from, from a younger age. Uh, Gdynia Without Barriers uh, is a special competi competition uh, which is organized eliminating stereotypes for thinking uh, about disabilities and uh, all the solutions for people with disabilities uh, are uh, so they receive awards from this current issued with, uh, with the graphics pictures, also award, uh, awareness raising and acceptance raising among the general public. Um, and this is the way. Uh, Gdynia has received uh, several awards for the work uh, which uh, has already been done in the city. For example, the mayor of Gdynia received the medal for Friend of Integration for special interest in the problems and needs of people with disabilities. And the European Council has granted its highest award, uh, Prize of Europe, for a commitment of the city uh, in social issues. Uh, the city of Gdynia was honored uh, in the Access uh, City Award, which was organized by the European, uh, European Commission in the uh, year 2013. We uh, came second uh, only after the city of Berlin. And uh, as you can see, the culture of the sports uh, hall, uh, Grinia, uh, we received uh, the main prize in the competition organized in, in Poland, Poland Without Barriers, for best adapted to the needs of people with disabilities sports facility in the country. Uh, we also have uh, been working to um, to digitalize, we can say, uh, our uh, our work in the city, uh, and a special uh, platform uh, has been uh, bought because this is not a platform dedicated only for for Gdynia, but other cities can also buy buy it and use it. Uh, so we have bought the the, the platform access um, and use it for putting alerts on uh, it. Uh, regarding uh, regarding different barriers for persons with disabilities, um, uh, it is in use since 2013, but is uh, still rather uh, in the testing phase. So uh, now, uh, different uh, districts of the city of Denia have been described or mapped uh, with uh, different uh, barriers, and uh, only now uh, uh, the the persons. Uh, uh, employed in the road and green areas management, for example, or in public transport authority, or in the building uh, buildings uh, unit in the city hall, have started to address uh, these, um, 
uh, these barriers are identified. And now we have more than 1,400 alerts and different in the different uh, infrastructure parts described. You can see here on the picture uh, there is a map of the city of Gdynia and the different uh, different dots, uh, which uh, in which you can see the number of the different alerts if you come uh, up close. The, the different colors are for the different uh, categories uh, described, so it is easier for this from the city side to address uh, the different um, the different obstacles. So, for example, the blue is a, the building, so the unit of uh, buildings in the city hall addresses these issue uh, these issues. Uh, the, the next one is. Uh, Dragi, so roads, and the next one is recreational places, and these both are addressed by the uh, road and green areas management uh, in the in the city of Gdynia. Uh, oh, sorry, and the and the uh, which is road crossings, and the next category is bus stops, uh, which is uh, which is addressed by public transport uh, authority uh, personnel. Uh, so this is also uh, also thought and um, and adapted to the needs of uh, of the city, uh, so uh, it it can be easy to address by by uh, different employees of, of the city. How do we get the alerts? So the different alerts which which were added. Uh, were done uh, within walks which were organized uh, by the city uh, city uh, unit uh, and these walks were by uh, in a district by six to ten people uh, walking in groups of two uh, or three persons uh, it is always one person with from the from the city uh, hall so for example from uh, road and green areas management person persons responsible for maintenance of infrastructure uh, and a volunteer uh, with a disability to be able to identify and, um, uh, the, the different barriers. Uh, this was a very useful experience for, for both, I think, because uh, the people in the city working for the city were able to see uh, identified and, and uh, closer feel uh, the needs of people with disabilities uh, and on the other hand volunteers with different disabilities uh, felt very much involved in uh, what is happening in the city and uh, felt that, that they can do something uh, for real for increasing accessibility in the city and that their voice is, is an important one. Uh, so after the different walks, um, the volunteers added the alerts to the platform uh, Let's Fix It, uh, and then then the main receiver of the alerts uh, uh, will be addressing them. They, it has started, but it is quite a slow process. Uh, also uh, within um, the municipality to um, to kind of switch into the new mode of uh, working via a platform. Mm, this probably will take uh, some some time. Uh, so th here you can see uh, a slide with the uh, with uh, the uh, alert how it looks like. So there is a description uh, on the map of the vignette. You can see the localization and also some photos which uh, are also very important to see the before and the after. Uh, they can also help to for different people with uh, in the city to see if uh, if an alert has been uh, already addressed or not, uh, and what stage uh, it is, what status it is. Is it uh, being uh, fixed or is it uh, for fixing within another investment? Um, so, so this can also increase um, uh, information between different uh, people to to be quicker and better. Uh, these are uh, just two examples of what has been realized within uh, or thanks to these walks. Uh, so in the first, uh, there was no crossing, and then uh, a, a crossing uh, for for people um, with disabilities with lower curbs was 
uh, was implemented. And on the lower picture, uh, <laughs> I don't have to describe the uh, the sign uh, is right in the middle of the pavement, and then it was it was moved to the uh, to the green area. Uh, so the future plans uh, for uh, for our website and generally for the work that has to be done uh, within the city uh, is definitely to make uh, an, an evaluation of uh, all the districts uh, in the city of Gdynia. We have 22 districts uh, and now uh, well, more than a half has have been um, accessed or barrier identified we can say. Uh, and then the, the the city hall is organizing uh, future uh, in the future uh, the next walk to so the all the districts uh, are uh, are identified and worked on. Uh, we have to start working on the problems uh, reported by the citizens and the volunteers, so that the citizens don't uh, also get discouraged to uh, to identify identify them. Um, uh, and now, because the, sit, the, the website is only uh, only used by people who are uh, or who are uh, taking part in the organized walks, maybe in the future, if the website proves to be a good tool and useful for both sides, uh, then uh, the the platform can be opened to a wide, wider audience uh, and used uh, as an online everyday everyday tool. For every person to uh, to be able to put in an alert. Uh, of course, we have to make all the all the investments which are uh, which are made or modernized in the city uh, accessible for persons with disabilities and the elderly people. Uh, and uh, it is important to also uh, organize workshops for investors and administrate administrate administrators uh, so that the new investments um, so that they understand, the investors understand why it is so important uh, for the city and for the citizens uh, to make all the places, the buildings in the city accessible for all. So a lot of awareness raising on, on different uh, levels is uh, very much needed. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all. And uh, if you uh, have any questions, you can uh, either contact me by telephone also after the webinar or, or by email. Uh, and I invite you also to uh, look at uh, the websites, uh, which, which have a lot uh, of uh, extra information. Uh, and I also take this opportunity uh, to invite you all on behalf of the city of Gdynia to the Civitas Forum, which I think will be a very uh, interesting uh, experience also in regard of uh, accessibility and, uh, and gaining more knowledge on the subject. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alicia. We actually do have a question. Uh, he also has a question if the website is available in English that you mentioned, though. Oh no! Well, the the, the Mobilna Gdynia has, uh, I think, an English uh, section, and the Gdynia also has an English section, but they are a little bit limited. So yes, sorry for this. I forgot that not not everyone is Polish speaking. <laughs> no, but uh, a part of it apparently is. Uh, so for that. Um, but of yeah. But of course, I uh, I would be happy to if uh, anyone looks at the website and generally uh, finds something that is interesting and would like a translation, uh, please uh, also contact me. I would be happy to help. Okay, that's a very good thing now. Thank you. But uh, as of now, there is no no. Therefore, at this point, I will move on to the next uh, presentation, uh, which will be coming from Teresa Santos. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, my name is Teresa Santos and I'm a traffic and planning uh, engineer and also a PhD student uh, enrolled in the PhD uh, doctoral program uh, in transportation systems of MIT Portugal uh, at the University of Porto. Uh, so today I'm presenting you part of the work that I've developed so far under the scope of my PhD project which is about uh, um, transportation tools uh, for an aging society. So let's move on to the presentation. Uh, this session 
will be about a tool to identify vulnerable geographical units in the context of elderly mobility and social exclusion that has been developed for the Transev 2015 conference that was held in Lisbon last July uh, with the support and guidance of uh, Professor uh, Mercario from the University of Lisbon and also uh, Professor uh, Jorge Pinto Souza from uh, INEC Porto. Uh, so the presentation is divided in seven parts and will take no more than 10 to minutes, I believe. It will start with a brief uh, introduction uh, and will be followed by the description of the main assumptions behind this work. Then the objective and the two-step methodology that constitutes the, constitutes the, the tool will be explained, as well as its main advantages. Uh, in order to show you an example of application, the study will be briefly presented too. So let's start. Uh, as we all know, today's older adults have better education, increased access to medical care, greater access to cars, larger incomes, higher levels of activity, especially older women, different responsibilities within their families, such as caregiving for uh, grandchildren or even older parents, and they spend more time in leisure, fun, and volunteering activities. So in this, in this context, mobility is a key condition to their personal independence. We can also add that in the context uh, of an aging society, meeting the transportation needs of older people is critical to ensure that they remain independent and do not become socially excluded, and that promoting out of home mobility to local should be an important aspect uh, in city planning and urban, urban mobility agenda. Um, the assumptions behind the tool I'm presenting you are that it is possible to distinguish geographical units according to older people's exclusion due to transport disadvantage. In this approach, uh, transport disadvantage is measured through the capability of people to access destinations. This is a capability type approach. And the factors influencing the mobility patterns and the quality of life of older people are the same that influence their social exclusion due to lack of transportation. So in order to define these factors, um, an extensive literature review was performed. Uh, in fact, several authors have studied the preferences and the mobility needs of older people, the links between mobility, transport disadvantage, social exclusion in several contexts. And taken together, their results and conclusions by seven factors that affect the seniors' use of the transportation system and, the, and the, so their respective grade of inclusion uh, and exclusion. These are uh, age, gender, educational level, residential location, level of income, household structure, and car availability. Um, the main goal of the, of the method that, uh, is that um, is, is to perform a cluster analysis where the geographical units are the cases and the factors influencing uh, social exclusion due to lack of transportation are the criteria for uh, classification. So this is the methodology. The first step will be the selection of a group of variables to quantify the seven factors referred before uh, for which uh, valuable X is available. The second step is the selection of the geographical units performing a cluster analysis where the geographical units are the cases and the seven factors uh, represented by the associated indicators are the criteria for classification. The advantage of the method uh, is that it allows 
to segment geographical units with different types of vulnerabilities. The outputs may be exported to other planning tools uh, such as GIS systems to help support transportation and political processes at a strategic and tactical level. So in short, it is a flexible tool that may be employed uh, whenever solid data and indicators that represent those seven factors uh, are available. It's a very simple. Um, as an example of uh, application of this method, um, this, this tool was tested for the Portuguese freguesias uh, using the available free data from national statistics and also from PRODE. Uh, freguesias are um, official geographical units that stand below the streets and also below the concelhos here in Portugal. So as of census 2011, a total of 4,260 cases, freguesias, were considered for analysis. Um, the first step was then select a group of indicators to quantify the seven factors we've heard before. Um, we had a group of variables that were chosen that included both continuous variables and also categorical variables. Uh, I don't know if it's very clear in the, in the, in the, in the picture. I will try to read them <laughs> for you. Uh, so for the age, we used the proportion of residents that were 80 years old or over out of the total senior residents. For the gender, we used the proportion of women out of the total senior residents. For the education, we use the proportion of total senior residents with some level of instruction and also the proportion of seniors with some university attendance. Uh, in terms of the household, we use the proportion of one person private household with 60 years old or over uh, by, by geographical unit. For the residential, we use the quarters density and also the type of geographic location that means from our national statistics, uh, just distinguishing uh, rural from non-rural areas. Then for the income, we use the per capita purchasing power by municipality. And for the car availability, we use the percentage of total residents using the car as main mode of transportation for community. Uh, it is important to mention that this, this choice of indicators has some, limi uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> has some limitations uh, because some of the indicators were only available by municipality or only for total residents. Um, the indicators related to the residential um, location did not distinguish the suburban areas, but the idea was to test the method and we had some uh, interesting results. So the second step was the, to perform the cluster analysis. The choice for the best technique uh, sh should be based on the type and amount of data that you use, and in this case, as it implied a large data set of both continuous and categorical variables, a two-step cluster analysis was performed. We used the algorithm of ESPSS uh, 20 tool, and uh, we arrived at a five-cluster solution. Uh, so, for you to have an idea of the type of results that this method can bring, because it was just a test, uh, I will describe you the five clusters we, we, we got. We got the first one, that were rural units with very low living quarter density and with the highest rate of elderly living alone. These were also the units with the lowest education rates the lowest income and the lowest car use for commuting. Another cluster that were that was uh, related to units that were not rural, with low living quarters density and with low education rate. Uh, these freguesias were also characterized by a high rate of elderly living alone and with a low car use for commuting. The third was rural units with average living quarters density, with high car use, and with, with a low rate of elderly living alone. <coughs> the, 
the fourth were was units that are not rural with very high living quarters density, the highest education rates, the highest income, and the lowest car use, typical uh, urban areas. And then oops, the fifth uh, was related to units that were not rural with the lowest rate of elderly living alone the highest and the highest car use. Um, these are, are Frexias with a high living quarters density and high education uh, rates, so also uh, urban areas. So as you can see, we have some limitations relating to the residential location. It would be better if we had used some more uh, specific, uh, how can I say this? some more um, detailed information on, it, on, on the variables and then on each factor. But the idea was to test the method with the available free data from our uh, national statistics. So moving forward, if we export the results of this type of analysis to a GIS format, we may have something like, th like this. Uh, which is an approach that may be used to transportation planning processes at different scales. We have either here the map of Portugal, but if we zoom it, not here, but in the software, we can have the information on each freguesia and on each, on each uh, cluster. So, concluding, uh, age, gender, educational level, income, House structure and car availability, availability, and factors that influence older people's mobility patterns and quality of life, and also their level of social exclusion due to transport disadvantage. And this two methodology, flexible tool that allows to differentiate geographical units in different contexts and at different scales as long as valid data on indicators that represent the seven factors um, are available. So this is it. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, please feel free to pose me some questions at the end of the webinar or also to contact me afterwards if you have any further questions. And you can also consult the, um, the article behind this presentation that is more complete. <laughs> Uh, that is at the Transnet 2015 proceedings. Okay, and thank you for th thank you MIT to Val and, F and FCT. I must mention them because they are my sponsors. Uh, thank you, Teresa. Uh, that was very interesting. Have you uh, so far had an opportunity to use this tool elsewhere than in Portugal? Has anyone tried out or? No, not, not yet. <laughs> it, for, for now, it, it was just an academic uh, exercise. It has okay. to, be, to be more explored. Do you think in the future that would be a possibility for practical implications that this would provide a way to do so when making uh, plans? Sure, sure. Because the, the problem when we are doing this as an, an academic exercise is that sometimes we don't have access to the data that would be more equate to, to, to test the methods. Yes. So if a municipality or a small region other than a, the country uh, would like to apply this, even at the different scales of geographical units, we can, we can try it. I believe it's a very useful tool. That can be used by me or by everyone. If we use the factors, if, if we have a group of indicators for each factor, and if we, if we perform a cluster analysis, we'll get some good results that will help planning uh, processes. That would be very interesting. I also have one question from the audience from Robert Stussis asking, would you, uh, would you have any data relating to mobility challenges of older people that would be uh, important? I'm sorry, I didn't listen to you too very well. If I have some data on uh, would you have any data relating to mobility challenges of older people? That is the question. Mobility challenges. Hmm. I'm not sure uh, if I understood the question. Uh, there was a <laughs> continued comment saying uh, you do have the seven sets of data. Uh, so, but none regarding disabilities. 
Yes, because it's a, a cap, um, it was focused on the cap, on the capability type approach. That means the um, the factors that we can relate to the to the not the territory but to the geographical unit, and that are not um, specially linked to to the um, to the accessibility issues. More like the access to the transportation system. I don't know if I explained this very well. I think, at least for me, it. Uh, I think, I think I followed your track of thought. But uh, if there's more questions about this, or if you, uh, anyone in the audience is feeling like would like to discuss it more, I suggest uh, you can raise your hand or you write a question, and we can we can get back to it at the end of uh, at the end of the webinar. If that's okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, I will now move on to the presenter to our third panelist, Klaus. Thank you very much, and uh, hello from uh, uh, Copenhagen here, um, and uh, in here. Um, I have been asked to talk a little bit about uh, cycling for especially seniors in, in our cities and, and promoting uh, a lifelong uh, active mobility. Uh, of course, um, it is important and vital to understand that uh, cycling, no matter who you are, is a very, very integrated part of, uh, of mobility in countries like Denmark and, and the Netherlands, and, and happily also in a lot of other European countries, we see a growing cycling culture. And just as a start note, that, that if you want to have more information uh, on uh, aspects of, of, uh, of cycling mobility, please check out the website of, of Cycling Embassy of Denmark, which is an, an independent organization uh, of over 30 members. It's in the cycling cities, it's private companies, it's NGOs, which uh, are all working with cycling. And our mission is to share our knowledge and know-how about cycling. And the Danish uh, Cyclist Federation, where I am the CEO, uh, that is, is the Embassy's Secretariat. Uh, as mentioned, I, I will talk about uh, how to keep older cyclists on their uh, bikes. And uh, for some of you, just getting young people to bike might be a, a challenge. So I'm just going to, to briefly share with you uh, the Danish context in which this survey that we made uh, at the Cyclist Federation uh, is conducted. Cycling accounts for 17% of uh, all trips in Denmark. There is a very big difference between uh, the amount of cyclists on the countryside and the amount of cyclists in the cities. In the city of Copenhagen, where I am right now, 65% of the inhabitants in the city, 65%, well, they bike every single day to work or education. 43% of all workplaces and study places within the city are reached by bicycle uh, every single day throughout the year. This is just to say uh, that, uh, that there is a, a very strong uh, uh, culture here. On average, they cycle 1.5 kilometers a day, both men and women bike in Denmark, with a slight overweight of uh, women. And we also know that 44% of all children between 10 to 16 days cycle to school. This introduction, this introduction, just to say that uh, cycling is really embedded in our in our culture, and we are of course also very happy that uh, the Danish Ministry for Transport made it very very clear in their uh, national strategy for cycling, which they published last year, that they actually say that uh, we save the Danish society for about one euro per kilometer that is cycled in prolonged lifetime and improved uh, health effects. And that, of course, uh, means that uh, there is an, an, an interest also in, 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 in keeping people who have left the working market to go on cycle when they become uh, seniors. Cycling is, of course, good for mobility in cities. It's uh, good for the environment. Uh, as I uh, mentioned before, it's good for the health of the person cycling. But it also has a lot of other benefits. Mobility is also closely related to quality of life of the individual, and cycling can make it easier for elderly people to maintain relationship and participate in various activities in their community, hence prevent isolation and loneliness amongst elders. 
But despite that, we uh, unfortunately see that the number of cyclists uh, over 60 years are decreasing in Denmark uh, in order to bring about solutions to make people cycling through the whole life. It is important for us to understand what makes people stop cycling at old age and what can make them start again. And to uh, gain knowledge about this subject, uh, the Danish Cyclist Federation and the Dan Age Association conducted a huge survey among Danes over 50, and the following results represent 1,600 people. The first question was, uh, why do people stop cycling? And uh, we realized that 12% of the respondents have stopped cycling, uh, and they rate their health and well-being lower than the group that still cycles. That is, of course, pretty obvious that there are some reasons why, if you've cycled uh, your entire life, why you stop cycle. And uh, one of the reasons uh, is, of course, uh, health and, and well-being. But the main reason we give for stop cycling is problems uh, with health or their physical ability. This is probably linked to the fact that this group uh, rate their health, uh, as, as I mentioned, the second reason why people over 50 stop cycling in Denmark is the feeling of insecurity in traffic. And the third reason is that the respondent got a car. Uh, as mentioned before, they may not have used the car in their professional life, but when they become seniors, they actually do get a car. And if we then uh, start uh, asking, well, what could uh, uh, get people back on their bikes? Uh, the main answers were uh, that uh, they uh, uh, that they knew that from more cycling they would actually get improved health and physical ability. And we know from other uh, surveys that has been conducted that uh, among cyclists there is a 30% lower mobility rate. And actually cycling is one of the ways where you as a senior can be physical active. You may not be able to walk that long any longer. You may not be able to uh, run uh, any longer, but uh, cycling, especially as many Danes, if you have cycled all your, your life, you can actually go on. Um, there's also a very huge demand for safe infrastructure. And again, that's uh, pretty obvious in, in a lot of other research that we have done, that if it is not safe and if it does not feel secure to cycle, people will not cycle. And finally, uh, a lot of, uh, of seniors say that they will actually start cycling again if they could get an e-bike, uh, an electric bike. And that is something that we learn more about. Uh, we see a rise in the number of, uh, of electric bicycles, but so far we haven't seen the amounts that, that countries like the Netherlands are, are, are facing these years. But uh, we, are, we, are, we, we are seeing an increase in, in the selling of, of e-bikes. But unfortunately, we also see an increase in accidents with old people on uh, electric bikes. So it is very important to offer information uh, on what you're actually buying when you buy an e-bike. If we look into those people who are still active cyclists, uh, well, we, uh, we, we, we ask them what made them feel safe and secure when they were cycling. And the top three is that, the, uh, as you can see on the picture, they want curb bicycle lane, a path with uh, curbs. And that is, uh, uh, I have to say, also the um, traditional Danish bicycle lanes that you have these Curb, curb and segregated bicycle lanes where you are separated from the uh, road traffic. The second uh, thing, uh, what made people feel safe and secure was uh, intersection with the traffic lights, that you'd much rather pass a road where there is an intersection with lights. And, uh, and um, if it was not possible with a curb uh, bicycle path, they preferred to have them painted uh, on, on the road. So there is a clear signal that the more safe uh, and secure infrastructure that you actually invest in, the more people will cycle. If you go to the other end, uh, saying that what makes people feel unsafe and insecure, well, it is, of course, uh, 
very obvious streets with no bicycle lanes, with high speeding cars, and also many trucks and uh, buses uh, makes people uh, insecure. When asked which element influences their choice of route, the same type of answers uh, rank highest. Um, bike path, you maybe sometimes will take a detour if there actually is a bike path. Green surroundings, green routes, routes in mainly car-free uh, environments, and that is uh, of course also pretty obvious when we talk about retired senior people that they actually want to use the bicycle uh, activities. And then finally, uh, good uh, is uh, uh, an often underestimated aspect of the feeling of uh, security that you can actually see what goes on uh, around you. All these elements, they uh, create a feeling of safety and security, and not only for, but of course also for other groups as well, children and women in general. Women rate good lighting, people and No speed. University, and he calls women the innovator species in cycling cities. Ask women what they want and build it. Um, we have done in the uh, Cyclist Federation together with Danage, we have made a lot of uh, material on electric bikes, so you know what you're supposed to uh, buy. And we have also uh, constructed uh, a lot of uh, educational stuff uh, on, uh, on, uh, on uh, uh, it says here, more old people up on the bicycle. But what are the things that you have to be aware of and, and, and so forth? I just want to end with a beautiful uh, story uh, because there's a lot of research, there's a lot of information, uh, but there's actually also somebody who does something about it, and it's, it's a wonderful Danish organization called Cycling Without Age, and please do check them out on the internet. It's a quite young movement started in 2012 by uh, a man called uh, Mr. Kasov, and Mr. Kasov wanted to help elderly get back on their bicycle, but he had to find a solution to their limited mobility. The answer was an electric rickshaw, and he started offering free bike rides to the local nursing home residents. He then got in touch with uh, a civil servant consultant within the city of Copenhagen, and she was intrigued by the idea, and together they bought the first five rickshaws and launched Cycling Without Age. The rickshaws are placed at elderly homes and volunteers sign up for bike rides with the elderly through a simple booking system as often or as rarely as they want to. Today, just four years later, um, more than 60 municipalities in Denmark offer cycling without age. 2,500 volunteers and to ensure that elderly all over Denmark get out of the nursing home, out on the uh, bikes to enjoy the fresh air and the community around them. They give them, as they say in cycling uh, without age, right to wind in their uh, hair. And the organization is also moving internationally uh, now. And if you as a senior cyclist want to go on cycling uh, to your very last day, well, the newest invention in Copenhagen is the uh, cargo bike undertaker, uh, and uh, it's actually very popular. The uh, lady undertaker there has a very good uh, business on that, and uh, and uh, has very good uh, responses uh, also from the uh, from the uh, deceased that uh, that it's a good way to uh, say goodbye after a good long active life as a cyclist. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Maybe there are some questions.
Uh, you're welcome to follow me on uh, all social media and of course also the cycling and the sea as I mentioned before. And as we always say here in Denmark, if you are a senior citizen. Thank you very much. Oh, there's a question uh, from Gregor Gavka. Um, I have a quick question to the last speaker from Copenhagen. Are the results of the survey available on the internet? Uh, unfortunately, uh, only in Danish, but there is a, a short summary on the website of uh, Cycling Embassy of Denmark. Okay. Uh, if you if you uh, search for elderly cyclist or elderly, uh, it, it it will come up. Okay. I can also, if it's okay with you, include that to the email that I sent. Uh, yeah. So anyone can have a direct link to it afterwards. Question to Klaus from Janot Mersch. I heard the more the more women are cycling, uh, the safer it is. No. Um, I think what, what, what you, if you ask if, if you ask women what they want uh, when it comes to cycling infrastructure, then you will be pretty sure to have a good and safe uh, cycling infrastructure. Uh, and uh, of course, that is uh, uh, probably more in an American or, or UK context where you have a lower percentage of women that cycle, which is not the case in Denmark. In Denmark, it's actually more women cycling than 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 than, than you see men uh, cycling. Uh, but uh, but but that was the point that 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 I was uh, making. That uh, if you want a real proper cycling city. Ask the women what they actually want, um, and uh, and uh, you'll have a good cycling city. Thank you. Mm. Hello, it's Joanna from Krakow. Uh, a question to Copenhagen: Do you try to activate those seniors who have not uh, got a who do not have a lot of cycling experience? Yes, uh, we we do that uh, together with uh, with the NH. Uh, we have uh, made this uh, publication, which talks a lot about to be aware of balance. Uh, maybe you are not so mobile any longer. So, what kind of exercises that you can make to actually start cycling again? And we do a lot of local training programs uh, where our volunteers in the Cyclist Federation work together with people from the Danage organization to uh, to to make people uh, reacquainted with uh, cycling and also try to encourage them to start in a very quiet place maybe uh, out in the nature or on a quiet road and then slowly move step by step by step and and suddenly integrate your, your yourself in in, 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 in in the cycling traffic that that there is if you need that, but the other thing can also be that you basically just want to go around in a very quiet neighborhood or the village where, 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 where you live. The point is that basically everybody can cycle if, uh, if they want to cycle. Tall people, small people, big people, skinny people, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a very, one can say it's a very soft kind of, of exercise compared to for example. Yes. Thank you, all, all our panelists and all our listeners for the webinar. If you have any further questions, uh, please do not hesitate to email me. I will send you an email later, like I said, with the presentations and a link to the recording. Uh, so you have my contact information from that. And uh, I will either answer you personally or pass on the contact details of uh, any of the panelists you would like to speak with. So. Thank you very much for joining us uh, and have a goodbye. great day ahead of you. Thank you. Yeah, goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.